Earth is a beautiful place. When I walk around in nature, I think that the world is beautiful. And it's not just beautiful, it's also large and unshakable. But when you start to see the Earth from above, things are changing. Then I see how urban areas are sprawling, and I see how agriculture is going into the last fertile lands. The best view on Earth is from space. And then you see what Earth really is. It is just a small and rather vulnerable planet. And we already see that there's many alarming signs. We see that temperatures have already risen, risen by one degree above pre-industrial levels. We see that biodiversity has slumped. And we see that some of precious natural resources have run dry. But the question is, how serious is this? Are we in a stage that this is really causing major problem within our lifetimes? Is this something that's going to shake up societies? Or will we humans find fixes to deal with that issue, to go into a sustainable future? Finding answers to the questions will not be very easy. Actually, it will be very difficult. And it's very important that we base our decisions on objective data and rational reasoning. Ideological or religious arguments should not have a, play, a role in this one. So what's now more important than ever, that we collect data, objective data, about the state of the environment. And we need to use sensors that are installed on the ground, sensors flying on aircrafts, and sensors being installed on satellites. We are now in a very fortunate situation that Earth observation has entered a kind of a golden area where there's hundreds of satellites circling the Earth, taking measurements of the atmosphere, the land and the oceans. Just Europe alone has dozens of environmental satellites that measure the, the status of the Earth across the electromagnetic spectrum. And the good thing, the fabulous thing about it is that these data are nowadays free and open. That means that everybody, you can come along, grab the data, and do something useful with it. But the point is, it's not that easy. Actually, working with this data is very difficult. It requires expert knowledge. So, the state of Earth observation is that we have a great bunch of data, more data than we have ever dreamed of, but using them is still a very difficult thing, and we are not using them for the full potential because we lack the capacities to do so. So what shall we do about it? Um, well, and my answer may not uh, you know, impress many of you, because there is no magic solution to the problem. In fact, we should continue what we have started to do, what we are good at, and that means we should cooperate more. We should cooperate at all different levels, between individuals, between organizations, between countries. And if you want to have a successful cooperation, that means you should share something. And in Earth observation, that means we should share not just our data, as already is happening, but we should also share our software and also our hardware. Sharing software is already something that is quite established. Just think about the open source movement that has brought us so many tremendous tools out there. Also, sharing hardware is not something really new, but it's well, it's not quite established yet. Um, what, we, what we will need is, we need to have uh, like much stronger data centers. And I'll, I'll show you, explain you now a bit why we need this. When you look at the amount of data that's being generated nowadays, we see that roughly every two years, the amount of data being generated doubles. We also see while well, this corresponds to a growth rate of about 40% per year. We also see that storage and compute is growing about the same pace. So you could say, well, hey, everything is fine. Uh, we, we generate the data, but we are able to store them and it process them, so everything is good. But the reality is that there are some technical features that start to fall behind. And a very important technical feature that starts to fall behind is our capability for transferring the data. This is growing by about 25% per year, which by itself is a very impressive number. But if you look over several years, suddenly there's a huge gap between the data that you can acquire and the data you can distribute. 
And that changes the whole way how our fields and other fields are now working. When I started to work on, on remote sensing in Earth observation as a scientist, the Internet has just become so powerful that it was possible to download the data from whole satellite missions. You know, so, so myself and my team, we just logged into the server of the European Space Agency and of NASA and other space agency, I would just pull down all the data from satellite missions. It may have taken us sometimes weeks or sometimes even months, but it was possible. Nowadays, that has changed totally. What we now have is that because it's not possible any longer to distribute the data over the Internet as, as it was in the past, we see that there's big data centers emerging. So people start moving the processing into the cloud. And for society, a very important question is, who owns those data centers? Who are the stewards of this web of data? And if you look out there, how, what's happening right now, it's the private industry rushing to become first. And in Earth observation, the front runners are Google and Amazon. But for science and for public services, I think we must have alternatives. I think we must have data centers that are not under full control of powerful corporations. So how shall we do this? How can we create those powerful data centers? And I think the answer is quite simple. We should cooperate and we share. The basic idea is very simple. If you have several partnerships, organizations that work together, they can take the individual hardware, co-locate it in, in a certain location, and then if you start connecting the hardware pits, suddenly you can create a shared storage space where you can put your data in and, and share it with everybody else, and you can create supercomputing capabilities. And suddenly, all of those organizations participating in that idea suddenly have access to petabyte of data and they have the capability for processing them. To put this idea into practice, we founded a public-private partnership a couple of years back. And I'm very happy to say that it seems that this very simple idea seems to work. It's not easy because cooperation is difficult. But we have now uh, over dozens of partners working on that, on, that, um, on that condition. And we have now many users working with this data center. Let me now already come to the end of my talk and, and let me stop with the observation that cooperation is not something that's very popular in politics right now. I do understand why, because cooperation is indeed something very difficult. It's a hard job. It's easier not to cooperate and say, it's me. Yeah? But if we want to solve our environmental problem, I don't think there's any, anything other than we have to keep on cooperating to solve those problems. So I would like to encourage everybody, in particular the younger generation, not to shy away from cooperating and sharing. I think it's worth a try, so that the future is as good as the present. Thank you very much.